December 5th, 1982, or roughly about probably 10 p.m. at night. It's hard to tell. I'm not sure if the clock in Percy's car is accurate or if it has been even updated since daylight saving. I doubt it works. No, it's like there's always like a number that's a bit off. It flashes here and there. It's never on properly. It's been a very long day. And it's going to be an even longer night. As a moment ago, you knocked at Kate's house. As she was about to probably rest and bed down for the night. There you did. Want to talk with her about all the things that were going on. Especially things regarding her... Otherworldly companion, in a sense. If we can put it mildly like that. And he did agree to a conversation. Why would he agree to that? It's hard to tell. Possibly for his own amusement. Probably, possibly out of intrigue. Who knows? But that's where we are. Percy as the agreement was made between Cade and Romalia that he was willing to talk to you as you pay attention you're one that is usually fairly aware of how things work around him movements that you see in the cor just the corner of your eyes For a moment, it seemed as if time just stopped. The needle on the clock no longer move. And you get that weird, cold sensation to the back of your neck. And the world around you gets really, really dark. Until there's nothing but complete darkness. The only thing that you can see is yourself. Cade, at least for a moment, as she morphed into this what would appear impossibly enormous hum outwardly humanoid man. He seems to be very, very far, yet so close, and as he walked towards you, his size doesn't seem to shift. Getting smaller but it's getting closer to you in a moment he's what you can only imagine probably a few feet in front of you he's some would say quite magnificent or demon at least but then again you haven't encountered many demons in your days and he looks at you and without even moving his lips, you can hear him just sourcelessly in your mind. So, you wanted to talk. Well, here I am. Yeah. <clears throat> Hold that thought a second. I'm going to reach into my belt, unclasp my holster, and pull out my revolver and just kind of hold it in front of me for a second. And then I'm going to pop out the barrel and just slowly let each of the bullets one by one clatter to the floor. And then toss the revolver onto the bed aside and go, I'm pretty certain. We both know that's not going to do shit right now, right? Just making sure we're on the same page. I mean... It would have been an interesting thing to figure it out together, would it not? Yeah. But I'm sure that's not why you're here. No, it's not. So tell me. <clears throat> to what do I owe the pleasure, Perseus? Well, I don't really like that. 
<clears throat> can they hear us? Kate, can Kate hear us right now? And he looks up. Why? Is there anything to hide? It's a good question. See, I've been keeping a pretty decent distance between me and them because I got this weird hunch in the back of my mind that there's no difference between you and Cade. And I'd like confirmation of that right now because I am not going to attack an innocent kid. Well, if it's her safety is your concern, I can ensure you she is safe. No things you can do here or say. Could not harm her. Right. I would not allow it. Good. Let's get down to business. I'm going to just kind of like plop back onto the bed, take the half empty bottle of beer that I have and offer it. Mm. It's weird because you're in a strange, sourceless place between your mind. But you can, you know that where like things would be and they just more or less operate out of this weird eater. Like imagine you're like in a completely dark room with nothing around you and like just like objects appear like oh a chair and you you plop onto that bed and as you do so you see him like sit down on a very beautiful elegant chair that was not in this room prior all right look i know a lot of weird things i've seen a lot of weird shit And you remain this big old fucking mystery, okay? And I am tired of knowing shit and not being able to do anything about it. So I would like to come to some sort of agreement here. And I put the gun away because I want to make it clear I understand the difference between us. And I also want to make it very clear that a gun is not the way that I could hurt you. And I will do something if you're going to be a danger so i would like to get right now on the same fucking page because i really like to have a friend rather than an enemy well now is the time to address your concern while i still have the patience to listen I don't know what you are. I don't know what you're trying to do. And if I knew and it aligned, I could help you with it as long as you help us. But if your goals are to harm people, it is better for me to remove you from the equation than to keep wondering. I must say, with all honesty, as I always Kate would probably test you. I always speak with honesty. I'm quite disappointing in you. Sorry. I, I would. She speaks so highly of you. But yet, here you are. Not. I was. I would expect somebody a bit more clever. Have you not opened a book? Have you not read anything about me? You know what I know? I know that books are written by people who want to understand. I know that you very well would not let anything truthful be written down about you. So I came to get it from the horse's fucking mouth. And you just assume because that I possess in mortal world the title of demon that I'm a terrible being. You assume that I would want to cause harm you or your 
but where have I ever shown that I want things terrible to happen to me? I've been nothing but generous and kind. Do you know who I am? Let's say I don't. I'd love for you to tell me. Well, you've heard my name before, have you not? Andrew Malleus? The Great Earl? I punish the wicked, the liar, the thief. Perhaps this is why you are worried, Perseus. After all, have you, are you a honest man? you're somebody who punishes the wicked you know the answer to that question and perhaps if you wish for us not to read again you have still have the chance to correct that my boy I am somebody who deals in knowledge and facts. And the fact is you're an unknown factor. Yeah, you might punish the wicked, but I don't know by what scales you choose that. So I'll make it very clear. I would be fine not meeting you again, but I cannot wonder if I'm gonna turn my back at some point and I'm gonna find a knife in it. So why do you need Cade? What is the reason for that? If you can tell me that, then I won't whisper the wrong thing to the wrong person and have an entire organization of very hell-bent agents come down. Hmm. Is that a threat that you make here? Or you imply that it may be factual? Let's consider it just the law of what would happen. It's natural consequence. What? My plan is with Kate. Hmm. Honestly, I haven't fully thought of that yet. At this time, I simply enjoy the partnership. After all, she well I would say did not summon me then then I agree upon my what was a time temporary visit into your realm to be bound by me as a how do you say an upgrade on our previous patron So, if you are worried that I will stab you in the back or compel you stab you in the back, you've got the wrong person here. This is not my type of games. I don't deal in lie and subterfuge i don't deal in murder i simply take what is given to me and put things in order now is there anything else i could do for you it seems like a nice deal I don't like nice deals. You never know what's in between the lines. Well, there's nothing in between the lines. Hmm. Unless, of course, you make a wrong step. 
I make sure she does not get harmed. Be careful on how you proceed. And you get jettisoned out of this. And the clocks around you, the sound, and all the noise. just suddenly like rush into your mind am i still in the room with kate oh yeah you're still in the room with kate exactly where you stood earlier okay. um i'm just gonna look at kate kind of like almost as if trying to blink away a really bad headache and go did you hear any of that Okay, you would have been very conscious of all the discussion. For you know, Andrew Millis never hide anything from you. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. I am. Um... I should have told you how suspicious I was sooner, though I hope it kind of makes sense why I was suspicious. You're suspicious of... Who exactly? Because I feel like you're suspicious of me, too. Fuck, I'm too drunk for this. Yeah, kind of. Do you need a water? No... Yes, but no, don't leave the room. I'm. Yeah, suspicious of you, too. I. Look, kid, you have no idea the things I've seen, the things that I have trusted, wrongly so. Sometimes. You have to ask questions and be sure. And I'm sorry. I really am. It makes sense. People don't trust it. They don't understand. You're right. I don't understand. And I don't understand you either. How are you okay with this thing in you? How are you okay with everything going on? And I think... um, I'm trying to remember what was I doing before. It was... I was just standing in the corner. Um, just sort of like cross her arms. Percy, why do you think I'm here? Great question that I would love an answer to, I think. You think I'd throw myself into all these absolutely ridiculous situations with you goofballs for fun do you want me to answer that honestly because kind of yeah you i mean i know that's half of why tiff does it i you i was a a kid once yeah I, i i was a kid once I know what it's like to feel like you're doing something you're not supposed to do, and maybe I'm projecting a little bit. I just... Tiff has magic, right? And and fucking Lakeisha is part of this agency with a robot arm. You've got a demon inside of you, and me and Bia are trying our best. Honestly, even Bia's got a reason to be here. She's been through so much. I'm here. Why? I don't fucking know. And then you seem so okay being here, even though it seems like you should be trying to get out. And I don't get it. If I was you, I would want nothing to do with this. You're here because something possessed you? Why are you okay with that? You know what it's like to feel helpless. 
I know you do. Yeah. If someone told you there was a way you would never feel helpless again, would you take it? Yeah. And not just helping yourself, helping anyone else you need to or want. Okay. I've been a bit of an ass to you, and I'm sorry for that. So let me be genuinely honest. It's never just a free surfing of not having to be helpless anymore. At the end of the day, you always got to be helpless for one reason or another. You can't be all powerful and someone's lying to you. Trust me. So just be careful with this thing. You know what I'm doing? Right. Well, like I said, I was a kid once and I knew what I was doing once too. So, humor me, and just keep an eye out, please. Sure, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. You want that water? No, actually, I shouldn't stay here any- I shouldn't even be here. Hey, if Tiff calls you, uh, don't tell her I was here. I don't feel like explaining that shit. Thank you. I need to get out of here. Drunk man comes in through the fucking window. What am I thinking? All right. Um, I'm just going to leave. And... Um, I hope to God I don't remember this in the morning. Fuck. Okay. All We're right. not here to hurt anyone, Percy. I'm just trying to keep people from getting hurt. Road to hell, Kate. It's paved in good intentions. Just. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can do better. I hope you can do better. And I'll leave back through the window. Probably like face plant into the bushes before making my way back to to Tiscar. And right behind you, Katie, you uh, here. Well. He's well, why? Why do you have to be such a dick all the time? Why can I not have any fun? Percy's worried. Oh, I understand. And it's quite endearing charm, honestly. Are you worried? About, about... my intention with you? Sometimes. You haven't exactly been an open book. That's true. But neither have you. And... I think it's okay. That you have your secret. And I have mine. Makes things a bit more interesting, don't you think? Idea of funds. Weird. Sleep well. Yeah, trust me, I will. And eventually find you however comfortable it is 
probably more comfortable than piracy because well our man is a disaster a different state and that is the end for this night time passed in fact about a week passed for here we are the morning of the 12th of December 1982 still pretty cold out there it's about 7 in the morning sun is not up yet because winter is like that What have you all been up to for the past week, and where are you at this moment? Uh, Tiffany is probably in her room. She's probably awake. She hasn't been sleeping really well. Um, Percy never came home, and Bia had to drive her to school last week, and she hasn't heard from him since. Uh, somehow a, her car showed back up at the house. Um, neither of her parents are talking to her. Uh, she's not talking to them either. She's not making it very easy. Um, she's become the laughing stock of the high school in a lot of ways because Casey knew, his mom knew, and they used the biology homework that his mom and, and Laura had agreed a long time ago she would never have to do because Casey Andrews' mom was my mom's best friend and they knew. Um, and she used everything that had been happening with Casey and I as an excuse to spill the secrets and wreck everything. So she's keeping to herself. She's going through school. She got to school that morning. She was a mess because <laughs> she, you know, didn't have clothes on her she didn't have anything she rallied the girls from the cheerleading squad found herself a cute outfit and used it as armor for the day um about the only person she's talked to all week is her best friend and jimmy and other than that she's really just keeping to herself and just trying to get to winter break which starts in like a week so in that week you haven't tried to contact home at all or go by by any means you've just been going from school to your sister's house no school to my house i've been going to my house but oh, okay. i'm not talking to either of my parents because i didn't want to go back yeah. to percy's because i didn't know how welcome i was going to be there because i've tried to call percy four or five times and mm -hmm. he hasn't answered his phone okay just wanted to make sure which room you were talking no, no no i was in my my bedroom at home i just don't it's basically she comes home she fixes herself like a snack or mm -hmm. something goes to her room does her homework stays in there reads or we'll leave and go back out or she'll stay out all afternoon, yep. like go shopping or go to the library or just go drive around or whatever. But she's trying to avoid her house at all costs. She doesn't yep. talk to anybody. Like she didn't say two words to be in any of gym classes this week. She hasn't called Cade. Um, she hasn't heard from Lakeisha cause there hasn't been like a job. And she's just very much been like zombie mode basically. Yeah. Cause she is still trying to come to grips with the fact that like Everything she thought she knew was true was not. And there's a lot of people that were keeping secrets from her. Yeah. Uh, the general feel that you get from Hole. Uh, there's a lot of things that are just not being spoken. A lot of people are just no longer in the same room at the same time. It is this home is more of a house now you know understand what i mean oh yeah and it, for her it has been just a house for a yeah. long time because she's always known something was weird but she didn't know what but now yeah. her dad is staying at work super late and he's going in on his day off and mm -hmm. you know all of a sudden he has meetings or he's going to the bar at night with his friends and her mom's going to bridge club or getting ba she's like hired babysitters so tiffany doesn't have to watch the kids like it's been really really weird yeah you're not in the known of every of everything that's going on. Maybe it will come to light in near future. Who knows? Yeah. But this has been your routine for the past week or so. Yeah. 
hey, with that in mind, let's hand to somebody else. Let's go with uh, Bia. What has your week been like? Most of her week was, on the one hand, normal, but also she's been trying to figure out what the hell happened to Percy. <laughs> um, because she hasn't been able to track him down. And so at this point, she started calling hospitals and morgues. Um, and then just worried sick. She knows that is not pushing Tiff because, ooh. And then, of all things, Friday night, she got a real fucked up dream. Real fucked up. Um, yeah, she, like, she always has nightmares about the night that her family was killed. And it was different this time. And Doug and Joan told her that she'd been chosen for something. And at first she was like, okay, yeah, this is a weird one, weird variation on the dream, but okay. And then she felt it. And it was not fun. Kind of like being in a mold with a hydraulic press just pressing down and forcing you into a new shape and she doesn't know exactly what the hell happened there or what chose her it was big but then she woke up on Saturday and there's a baseball bat that is new to her at the foot of her bed and she picked it up and it felt like the thing so she's rather inclined to believe that it did actually happen and something weird happened to her and that out of game Bia's class playbook has changed from the wronged to the chosen she is yeah Having a time. <laughs> Having a time is quite the understatement. Uh, one could say. Mm -hmm. uh, what does all of this remotely mean? I guess only the future can tell, right? Yeah. It means that she's absolutely... Because uh, it was actually like Doug and Joan that was talking mm -hmm. to her. Not like her dream figment. No, no, it, it, it was thing. very there, very, re very real. And uh, they <laughs> threatened her very lovingly to stop throwing yourself in all the danger. God damn it. Stay on that side a little longer. Jeez. So. <laughs> yeah. But Which that is... means very. So no longer throwing herself into danger as much which is most likely a good thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's I mean, probably it's... also good for percy's blood pressure and um, also for like the up. cost of your life insurance yeah uh, it's probably very good for that uh, but speaking of pe uh, people that you know throw themselves into danger uh, yeah you've looked everywhere the more the hospital and all that there's no Percy Banks or any John Doe that would match the description. So he's out there somewhere. But I guess that's something that we'll have to find out soon. Hey. Been... <laughs> he's somewhere. Who knows where, but he's somewhere. I, I don't know. Nobody knows, but he's somewhere. <laughs> I have to make sure that Bia doesn't find him in the week because otherwise she'd have dragged him by the ear at this point. <laughs> hey. I'm sure that uh, other people have fun and interesting and also very calm weeks. 
Lakeisha. What have you been up to since that fateful night where last we saw you? You were having a bit of a meltdown, I do believe. Yeah, because apparently I'm a bastion of calm. Sure, sure. That's mm -hmm. the I lady mean, that carries grenades around. It is, it is one of your character around. traits, right? <laughs> bastion of calm. I, I do believe it is in Lakeisha's like, biography here. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, once a professional, always a professional, right? So I think that to make sense of the work that she does on the daily, right? Without having any special powers, without having a demon daddy at her beck and call, she's got... I was gonna say she's got two hands. Technically, she's got one. And then she's got a robot hand. So, just for those who would uh, want to uh, boil it down to semantics, let's say. But, I think to make sense of the world and the things that have happened thus far, I think that she will throw herself further into the side project that she's had going, which is at all times to track down exactly what happened to her father when he died mm -hmm. years ago. Right? Uh, I mean, you know, the arm, it's, it's really good. It's handy. You know, the R&D boys get all in a tizzy and excited every time they have a new iteration of the tech, you know. But I could have just the one arm still. And I'd still be digging as hard as I could because I know for a fact that the higher ups are hiding something from me, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so... In the interest of that, uh, I've got an uh, an inn on the inside. Uh, I've got a special friend of mine that I've been hanging out with more often lately. Hmm. And her name is Mimi. Mm -hmm. Yep, she's one of R&D's best and brightest. And, uh, you know, we met a couple times uh, when I was busy getting upgrades. And uh, what can I say? One thing led to another, right? Mm -hmm. In a weird kind of way, you know, I feel like she's got a fascination with me because I'm like the test subject. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a little bit of strange mm. mixed in there. You know, I hear these... Uh, you know, white boy counterparts of mine talking behind my back. They don't think I hear, but I hear them. You know, why she got them? She got to have a metal on. You know, how could she have survived something like that? There's got to be something else to it. Who does she have in her back pocket? Well, I let the rumors run where they may. So far so good. I think me and Mimi have stayed be beneath the radar so to speak. But through her, I've been getting you know, little bits of information over time. And I'm still trying to make sense of it. You know? Uh, so when I'm not on an assignment, she's the one that I end up spending time with. Because you know what? Not a lot of people get me like she does. So I'm assuming for the past week, besides working those little projects here and there, going to work and dealing with what I can only assume is quite a mountain of paperwork associated with all the bureaucracy of certain institution. Uh, for the most part of that week, you've been spending your time off 
Mimi's coming. Oh, oh yeah, I mean... Enjoying you know, the good things you know, of life. Oh, yeah. You know, one one more perk of having the metal arm. I am now ambidextrous, and I can write at two times the speed. So, yeah, fuck paperwork. I hate fucking paperwork. Anyway. All right. Should we check on our dead man? Where's Percy? Where, where has it been for that nobody could find him for a week? C- could I... <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to do this. Could I ask the uh, the GM to to pull an audible and do Cade first? Because I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. All right. Look, we can <laughs> fix it in post, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Keep that in. Let them know. Me. All right. I'm panicking right now. <laughs> Just okay. to show that we are we're, we're a proper professional, and you know, yeah. Jay Son, is I'm keeping it in. Jay is top tier professional, and has thought about every aspect of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have to figure out a reasonable reason of why I've been gone and ghosting everybody for a week. Eh. <laughs> I don't know. Admit it, you've been hiding in the basement, not talking to anybody and not letting anybody know you're home because you're freaking the fuck out. He, he's been doing that like fucking Michael Myers thing where he's just watching you from a distance constantly, but whenever you look over, he's gone. And that's all he's been doing. <laughs> anyway, sorry. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, but all. hey, while you figure that out, Kate. So, following that day, interesting day, and almost as interesting, if not more interesting, night. And what has been your going on with you, your thought process, and your daily routine? Kate's been keeping up with her daily routine for the most part. Nothing would have seemed to change on the surface, but she has been a lot more sort of introspective and uh, thinking a lot about her- Percy's visit made her wonder what other people on the team think of her. And now she is concerned if maybe they are all maybe like in on something she's not like is there a plan to take her out if something goes wrong or you know who else is percy talking to about this so her mind's been spinning a little bit but she's been you know she's been kind of going through work she uh i imagine things at a record store would get busy during the holidays so she's probably been busier there um probably working a couple of like opening closing shows just to keep herself busy and not have to think about a lot of stuff. Um, this is the time of year when her parents start talking to her, trying to get her to come over. She really doesn't want to. Um, so she's also avoiding them. And as, because you understand that even do you, even though you have this connection with Undermelis, which, contrary to popular belief, is not always within you, like, as a person there. He's, he's there, he's connected. It's like, it's like, unseen thread between the two of you. Uh, but he does not know or pry for your inner working or talk. You respect your privacy. Did you share any of your concern with him? Probably not, unless he noticed something was up and asked. Let me... Hmm. Let me... Just roll for him, just real quick. I'm gonna... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Whether or not you notice something, you're not sure. That depends on all you believe that you are good at hiding things. But when you spend so much time with somebody, especially in this unusual matter, it would not be shocking that you notice something. As if you did ask you I didn't, I didn't think about it he did not possibly either out of respect for your own privacy or simply in the hope that if there's anything that you would like to share 
that he would come forth. But besides that, like work has been work. Work has been extremely busy. Uh, a bit more so than usual. There's a few, you know, new album that are just coming out and people are just down to get them. I've I've not looked at the top chart and new release from like the late 80s, early late 1982. Uh, but I'm sure there's a few. Thriller has literally out. been out for two weeks. Well, there you go. At the top of the chart. That is why it, she is so busy. <laughs> and it, it's probably been like sold out for the past week. And every, every day there's somebody coming in to know if there, you receive new copies of it. And usually the answer is no. Uh, but yeah. It's been an interesting week. No, as a as we are, no usual circle. I as certain thoughts about you. Well, I guess we'll get to find out at some point. But now, let's return properly to the big professional man over there that has been hiding in the woods or somewhere. <laughs> that definitely has been like spending the past minute or so deeply thinking about what the yep. fuck has he been doing. Yep. Um, I bought a Bigfoot costume and I'm just in the woods. <laughs> no, Did Percy uh... get shot? Um... <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I, uh, can I ask? To make a act under pressure roll, and that was absolutely a okay. First roll. Okay. Um, this is just to see if he does the the unhealthy thing or the slightly less unhealthy thing. All right. Respect. Um, five minus one four. Okay. Yeah. Get fucked, dude. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, so he's gonna do the unhealthy thing, <laughs> which I think uh, we've determined is getting fucked. So, um, calm down, Bia. So he's going to <laughs> he is going to um, skip town for a little bit, and he's gonna rent a motel room, and he spends days setting up the same web of red yarn that he has in his house. Um, he recreates it to almost a scarily accurate degree for having no reference. He can't see it, but he's memorized almost every single bit of it. And he's just setting it up and going through it. And it is a manic episode where he is convinced that if he does this again, if he starts from the beginning, he's going to find a missing piece that makes sense. That's going to make everything that's going on in the town make sense. It's going to make all the missing mysteries make sense. Everything that has been happening has to have a central tie. And he just keeps doing it over and over and over again. Um, and I think on maybe like his fifth time of resetting up this web, he just kind of collapses and it, is a little bit silent as th there is something that clicks in his head it has nothing to do with the mysteries but he finally realizes after making all these threads over and over again the single factor on why everything has gone wrong is because he was involved in it and he just sits there on the ground for probably a day or so just occasionally getting up and moving around very similarly to to uh, Tim in just this zombie-like state. Mm -hmm. And then he will probably finally go over to the, uh, the wall phone and phone his house and hope somebody's there. Early in the morning on the 12th of December. If you have, you know, you've been sleeping all night or probably knowing Percy, you've been, probably been awake for way past 24 a hours. very unfortunate amount of time, yeah. Um, now, is there anybody on the other side of the phone answering that call? There's only a few possible candidates here that would possibly answer that. Bia was I'm... using the training equipment 
in the basement. Yeah. Yeah, it is still very early. It's about seven in the morning. I, I and... said what I said. Yep. <laughs> Her sleep has been garbage. <laughs> Understandable. Um, so she got up early and was like, well, the new bat is heavier than my usual ones. I need to practice with it. <laughs> and so she was down in the basement, like just working on form and everything. And the phone yep. rings. It rings. Do you pick up? Oh, yeah. Just goes up and thanks. This is Bia. Hey. Percy, what the fuck? I know. I know. I. I there is literally nothing I can say right now that will make anything okay. Um, I'm just calling to let you know that I am okay. Oh, I'm not okay. Um, Where are I'm, you? What's going on? Why do you want to know? So I can bail your ass out of jail if I need to. I, not in jail. You don't have to come here. I. Uh, this was a bad idea. No, uh, don't, don't not hang up. What's going on? There is so much to that I cannot answer. And you deserve an answer. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I am a very broken... Nope, that's a bad way of starting this. Um, I need to talk to people. I need to talk to a lot of people. Yes, yes, you do. Um, where are you? Uh, I'm about six miles out of town, not too far. Just at the old motel. Okay. You oh. Way back. Yeah, not without sleep, but yeah. Um. Maybe you should come pick me up. Maybe, maybe that's a better idea. Maybe you should pick me up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the mountainside one. Mountainside view. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it's quite out, out of town. Like, Percy, you, you you went out of your way to make sure that nobody you knew in your immediate circle would... Yeah, see. try and look there. Yo, yeah. managed to get out of Bia's circle, which is very <laughs> impressive. But he knows you. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> um, I will probably just, like, try and lay on the bed and I'm like oh there's there's no way I can turn my brain off there's no way I can, I can think and then I just fucking pass out until Bia gets there and it's uh faster than is probably safe in the current road condition but mm -hmm. you hear that that ram <laughs> charger pulling up outside uh I will gather my things and Percy's not usually well kept in the first place. So to say he looks unkempt is a very impressive uh, feat. But he just shambles down an absolute fucking mess. And just very silently gets into the car and closes the door. And I think Bia lets it stay silent for a little bit. And and just goes so Sid, you're coming back yeah um I I'm, I'm right into this issue right now because sorry is not anything but I don't know what else to, to say um You don't deserve for me to have done this. Neither does anybody else. That's gonna have to be the start with, I mean, everyone, but Tiff. Yeah. 
Um, she's not good. Of course she's not. Uh, no, she wouldn't be. She wouldn't be. Uh, I'm not good. And, and if I'm not good, then me talking to her is not going to make her good. Me being around her has made her very bad. So, um... What? Duh. <laughs> I am not a good... I'm gonna do this again, Mia. I'm gonna leave again. It's what I fucking do. So, it's not a good idea for me to be around her. You're a grown woman, you can make your own decisions, but it's probably not a good idea for you to be around me. I just... I'm gonna fuck up like this, okay? This is who I am. I've kept doing it. I'm gonna do it again. So... Maybe it's just best if we go back, I pack my things, and I go, okay? That would be the biggest fuck-up you ever make in your damn life, Percy. Leaving is one thing. Gotta come back. That's the part. God, what the hell have you been doing for a week that's got your brain this absolutely wrecked? Trying I'm... to find a goddamn answer, Bia. Trying to find an answer about any of this, about any of this bullshit, about why this keeps happening, about why the world keeps falling apart around me. And I realized that it started falling apart around me when I started trying to get myself fucking involved when nobody asked me to. So if I go, maybe you all will stand a fucking chance about whatever this is. Because I'm not helping. I am just an idiot with a bottle and a gun he probably shouldn't have. I won't disagree on the gun right this moment. That's more because I'm concerned about you being a danger to your own damn self. self sad. You put yourself at the middle of that damn web, don't you? You put yourself there, no wonder it looks like everything comes out of you. It's... God. I've known Tiffany all her fucking life. She's known that there was something off. That family was never the shiny, happy bunch they put themselves on as. You... You helped her, God damn it. Do you know how long Bobby Tate had been promising her that damn car? He'd been promising cars since she turned 16 years old for birthday, for Christmas, birthday again, Christmas again. And by God, you try and measure up to that. And it took him looking at you, realizing that you were helping for him to do one goddamn thing for her. You, you mean, God fucking you, what what's the deal with you? Huh? You got like a, a thing for broken people? What why do you give a fuck about me? You who has basically raised the whole fucking town. You who has fought monsters with your bare hands. You're this incredible person and No, doesn't make sense. Something's not adding up. Why do you give a fuck about me? Huh? And she pulls over and you can see that she started crying and she just goes, you're such a fucking idiot. I love you, Percy. You're a goddamn brilliant man. You're so good at acting the fool. And I know how smart you are, and you just... <sighs> You're so goddamn good at putting yourself in every kind of harm's way and then treating it like it's your fault when things happen, and it's not. And you're trying to help, and you try so hard, and then when it, things don't work out, you think it's all on you, and then it's not. Fuck! <laughs> Uh, 
Oh. And I've been talking to Tiff, and I am not supposed to share this, but you need to fucking hear it. So we've been planning for fucking months this goddamn paperwork because she wants you to adopt her. Fucking God. Oh. Uh, she wanted you. She wanted you as your as your daddy before she knew that you were. Excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna open the door, step out, just very gently close it, and step out of sight. And you should. <laughs> he just starts puking all over on the side of the road for like a minute. And he just kind of steps back into the car and closes the door. <sighs> okay. Um. Would it be unfair of me to ask for some time to uh, uh, contemplate that? I'm giving you till this afternoon. You're we're going back to my place. You're going to take a shower uh -huh. and a nap. And right. you're gonna eat some muffins. And then you're talking to Tiff. Right. Hey Beer. I don't know if I'm ready to respond to that. That's fine. I'm very lucky. And um, that might just be the reason I've been needing to do better. So thanks. Yeah. And she's gonna get back on the road and wow. you can see in the back seat there's a new baseball bat back there and it's very shiny and very magic. Oh, awesome. Distraction. Uh, he will <laughs> inspect it, like hold it and look at it for way longer than he should. for As long as he'll be able to. <laughs> <on the way. laughs> It's probably uh, a very intense ride back in town. He probably doesn't say a single other yeah. thing. <laughs> they may or may not be some jams playing the car. Who knows? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, B's got oldies cranked 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> I respect it, as it should. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll go back and uh, shower and <laughs> contemplate. Yeah. Uh, all the mirrors are covered in the house. He's very okay with that. <laughs> Perfect. Love that. Uh, all right. So, roughly at the same time as... Because time is a soup. So a few things may be happening at the same time. Uh, it is a very early Sunday morning. So, for some people, they're off school. Some people are not working. So on. Uh, some people, well, Sunday doesn't mean anything for them. Um, Lakeisha um, does Mimi either sleep at your place or do you usually sleep at hers or it's a mix mm. of both here and there yeah I think uh, I think as close as she has been getting with Mimi she is not given her access to her Mm -hmm. the her place yet so yeah. i think we're over at mimi's place yeah right. and it's a it's you know standard issue uh agency issue department there's nothing yeah. really special about it uh, it's, it's fairly standard it it fits the bill it does what it's supposed to do uh what a bit of personality you know as 
and agent are encouraged to add their own personality to their own living space. You know, otherwise it'd be very, very bland and boring. She likes orchids. Yeah. You know, you while the rest of the group really doesn't see uh, much beyond the steel exterior from mm -hmm. Lakeisha, she brings her a new orchid every time she sees her. There you go. Uh, now, um, is Lakeisha a er, very early riser or does she sleep in on a Sunday? Definitely an early riser. To an annoying point. Uh, Mimi is already used to the fact that, yeah. uh, you know, she's up early, she's doing calisthenics, she's working out the arm. Uh, so, you know, she probably wakes up to the smell of breakfast, uh, yeah. but also the sound of, uh, Lakeisha, like, picking up the living room couch by herself, just doing reps. <laughs> and she'll just look over and say, oh, hey, uh, yeah, eggs are on and the uh, bacon's almost ready. <coughs> good. At least you did not turn on the vacuum this time to wake me up, so that's good. drops the couch and she's like uh i mean you know could have been would, would, worse like, would it would would it kill you like to just like sleep a bit in on sunday are like, you kidding you, me you, 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 you know you don't have to it's a it's beautiful sunday. day come on it's a i mean do you expect day. anybody to call you in for work what do you mean it's a beautiful day? it's still dark outside well that's the beautiful part about it. Ain't nobody calling me to do shit yet. And it's nice and quiet. You'd be surprised how much I value quiet these days. Alright, well. Breakfast smells good, so. And kinda uh kinda tugs at her a little playfully and kinda gives a smooch on the cheek as she passes by into the kitchen. Are, do you have any assignment for today, or, or should I expect you to, you know, be gone by noon? Well, you know the the two uh, colleagues I've been telling you about, and uh, for reference, Lakeisha is referring to Tiffany and to Kate. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't name them. Um, yeah. That's the part that she kind of keeps to herself. Well, those two, uh, you know, colleagues that I'm I was talking to you about earlier. I don't know. I mean, things have gotten kind of uncomfortably crazy these days. Let's say, and I don't know. I mean. You have to understand, I go by what I see and what I can put in my two hands, you know? And this stuff with magic and otherworldly creatures and... I mean, I don't know what to do. The higher-ups are coming down on me to monitor these two. But they're barely out of their kids' years. Come on. I mean, they're just trying to grapple with stuff that's been forced onto them, really. I, I don't think either of them have a bad bone in their body, quite honestly. Even the one that's got a so-called demon daddy, you know? But I just, there's... There's a part of me, Mims, I'm telling you, it's like, it's this gut feeling that there's, there's a ticking time bomb there somewhere, I don't know, maybe it's, t tell me, tell me it's my own paranoia, tell me I've been in too deep too long. I mean, I could tell you that, but I know you, you're not going to believe a single word, even if I tell you. You have to convince yourself. I cannot convince you. I can tell you that everything is going to be fine. That, no, 
tomorrow you might be able to retire and actually, you know, relax for a bit. But I know you. You're not going to retire until you're dead. <laughs> and that's probably what's going to kill you, honestly. You know, that's exactly what my man, my old man used to say. My dad used to say, you know what? You retire when you're dead. And then somebody took his life. I just can't shake the feeling that I haven't been told the entire truth. And I swear to God, if I got to tear down every block of that agency to find out what the hell really happened, I'm going to do it. And I'll do it with the tech that they gave me. I swear to God, I will. I just, I'm trying not to let these things drive me nuts before I even get to that point. Okay, look, it's still early in the morning. You know, let's have some coffee. Or tea, actually. Probably tea would be probably better right now. Then just calm things down. We're going to put some, you know, nice little tunes. We're going to watch the news. Relax, drink, you know, have food, and hopefully nobody's going to call either you or I in the office or for anything else today. T, hey, really? Get out of here with that. Are you kidding me right now? No, I've got your chai latte right over here. I know, you know, you little... But, uh... Yeah, but I wasn't talking for... It wasn't for you. You need to calm down a little bit. Listen, hold the... Hard black coffee for me. That's all I need. I'll nurse it. How about that? Instead of treating it like the shot glass, like I usually do, I'll face myself. All right. And, you know, she grabs food, you know, pour a cup of coffee, put on t and TV. Yeah, you know, you know, she watch her more in the morning news, you know, catch up on things. It's like that. Yeah. yeah. Lakeisha uh, grabs her by the waist and puts her face in her hands. And um, she always tries to be extra gentle with the robot arm, even even though she's uh, used it countless times. But Mims can always tell that she's trying to be extra gentle and she looks her in her eyes and says you know if I didn't have you in my life I don't know where I'd be probably in jail yeah, probably. Especially as many times as Percy has pissed me off. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you just make a situation all okay like that? Who taught you how to do that? I just listen. That's all I need to do. You don't need anybody to tell you what to do. You just need somebody to talk to. You know what? Instead of talking to yourself in the mirror. You know what? Just... You're a freaking genius. Oh yes, I know that. <sighs> and gives her a kiss. And um, I think in one of her uh, uh, moments of clarity, I think she uh, she starts grabbing like uh, Mims has seen this before. Like she'll start grabbing like piece of toast, uh, you know, a couple of eggs to go, and is she's starting to get ready to to rush out, definitely. Um, and uh, whether or not Mims decides to stop her. She'll say, maybe that's how I need to approach this with these two. 
Maybe all they need is people to stop telling them what to do. And they just need somebody to listen. I, I think I can do that. I can do that. Could you do me a favor? Uh-oh. <laughs> just roll me a sharp. Oh, just straight okay. sharp. Sharp. Okay. <laughs> oh, kind guide. Is this uh, anything about reading a bad situation by any chance? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> As it, I is, it is vague it, it, it is very vaguely that like okay no if it's if it's not specifically i that, would just I say won't... very much straight sharp it's oh. just because there's no nothing very specific that exists in... okay well i rolled a total of seven all right um as you are heading out with your coffee and I mean what what is is actually just a regular cup because it was not served with the intent of, of being a to go cup. Uh and you step out and are about to probably go to your car. You just like have a moment of realization that She's a bit sad and disappointed that you just left so early. But she did not stop you. And in typical fashion, Lakeisha clocks it and somewhere in the back of her mind just mutters under her breath, Sometimes it's better that way, and keeps walking. Perfect. Cade. Are you working this Sunday? Probably because, I would assume, most likely, because one pay is probably very good. And it's a very busy season. But are, I'm asking you, are, are, is Kade working on the Sunday? Um. Hmm. I'd actually say probably not. I think for the first time yeah. in like the week, she's like, I should probably have a day off. So I think she's going to take this Sunday kind of easy. Is she going anywhere on that Sunday morning? Or um... any anytime between the morning and noon? I could see her maybe, like, going for a drive or something. Hmm. That sounds like something she'd do on a Sunday. I'm trying to think of where she'd hang out in town, but she doesn't really, like, hang out with other people. So, yeah, I, th I feel like she'd just, like, drive around and maybe stop by a park or something and... Yeah. Listen to music. Perfect. Uh, while you're possibly stop at the park, you know, just listening to music in uh, your van, which is still in decent shape. Uh, you do notice not too far from where you are currently parked. Uh, I wouldn't say a similar van, but another vehicle with um, an assortment of Young people, probably around your age, give or take, you know, a few years older or more, you know, uh, listening to uh, some tune, uh, you know, some, some of the tunes that you, you are possibly, you know, used to and listening to, you know, some, uh, some more, some things that could also uh, more or less uh, cl cl uh, classify as dark wave music which is right on common like besides certain crowds around here uh but it is an absolute vibe uh, looking at them uh, i could only describe their general aesthetic because it's for me the easiest way have you ever watched the movie the lost boys it is an absolute classic from 1987 don't think so <sighs> So I was really sheltered, I'm sorry. 
All right. Well, <laughs> deep cut reference. <laughs> I haven't actually seen it, but I know these. Yeah, I, I know the exact reference. And it is a, it is a I cut. I love man. that Looking film. At... Uh, well, for listeners, if you haven't watched Lost Boys, go watch it. Um, but yeah, the general aesthetic of that, you know, group of uh, young younglings, said least, um, it's you know, it's very very much on the alternative scene, uh, which there's a few in Fairwick, but it, it it is not where this is the most prominent. Uh, uh, and you are probably one of the few people in your general group that would probably be in the known for where this type of kids would be. Like, would would a few like probably the handful of kids in town that are into that. Like, it's it's always like usually like the same four people that come ask for like those one odd records that once in a while gear we will special order for them. Um. You've never met them before. Um, they're odd and charming in their own way. Uh, but just vibing in the very early hours of the morning. And uh, one of them uh, younger woman, probably roughly your age, you would estimate, it's hard to tell. Uh, notice you and give you a bit of a smile before like, going back into uh, conversation and other act- recreational activities with her friend. Kate is immediately confused that somebody actually noticed her presence. She very, She tries very hard to not be noticed. I mean, it's not very hard because you're probably the only two vans in the park. Fair. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I think she'd kind of like look over and is very confused and then maybe like looks away and like tries to like, she's like, was, it, was she looking at me? Maybe, maybe I'm making it up. I don't think she's actually looking at me. Was she? I feel like she was looking at me, but I don't want to like look again because that'd be weird if I'm looking and then she sees me looking. She's oh, you're just like that her. in your van, like covering like <laughs> like yourself from yeah. the window. <laughs> yeah. And as you are sitting there, you do hear like a knock at your window. She definitely jumps. She was not expecting that. Uh, uh, you're like, you're like doing like roll down. Come on. Rolls it. Rolls it down. I almost did this, but I remembered it's this. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure when exactly, like, like the like the magic roll down window like came into like a fake and like it was like very expensive cars. Like if you had like rolled down yeah. a window with a magic like that, like you oh, paid a lot of money nice for that. Car. <laughs> no, it's well, actually not because she has Latisha's car. Yeah, it's nice, but it's she not nice that car. nice. It's not quite that. It's not quite that level. Hey. Hi. How's it going? It's going. Uh, can I help you with something? Maybe. I mean, you you, seem, you look pretty cool. Like, like we're new. We're like just like coming to town. Uh, probably just by. Like, do you? Know, best boss in town? Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for food? Are you looking for to chill out? A bit of boat, I guess. You know, what's your night scene like? If you have any. Uh, I don't really go out this when I do. Is... It's to weird cemetery parties. Uh... There's a couple clubs around here that aren't too strict about IDs, if that's something you're interested in. I wouldn't worry about that. Oh. It's not like those like old-timer club where like they play country music and shit, right? 
No, no, there's definitely some uh, better places around here. I don't frequent them, but I, yeah, I can point you to a couple. Yeah. Uh, if yeah, and she like takes a essentially a gas station receiving in the pan. Yeah. And you say like sometimes like cemetery party like do you, do you know when this is gonna be the next one? It's been a while since we've been to one. Uh yeah, that one was kind of a special situation the last one we had. So I don't know when we're gonna have another one. Um, but. I don't know, on like a Sunday night, there's maybe like one bar that's kind of open, it'll be dead, and y'all can go in and do what you want. All right. And you mean you crash down the address information? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think like, I don't know, what's what's a place? There's help. <laughs> uh, there's, there... I mean, there's a couple of dive bars and stuff, but if there's like an emo, yeah. basically emo club, that would be something Cade would know about and Tiffany would have no idea. So that's the yeah. one that's just kind of so, out there. Go so feel free to create. We are making a lore on the spot here. Awesome. Uh, okay. But what would be a good uh, uh, dive bar? Say it's called or... the Depot or something. Depot. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just like a really grungy dive bar. Not it a lot of people probably used go. to be a warehouse. They never just never bought it to really yeah. change the sign. Yeah. Interesting point of fact. Uh, Lakeisha would probably know about it though. <laughs> oh, Lakeisha would know about it. Oh, 100%. Percy but, does yeah. not. He does not know anything about the depot. <laughs> you mean like the Home Depot? Yeah, I know that place. He's like, oh, I've heard of Home Depot. <laughs> this is how knows place. a bar okay. down the street from his house and nothing else. Yeah, yeah. No, th this is not a place but for yeah. Percy. This is a place for Lakeisha and Kate. Yeah, the, you, you you would know the depot. It's it's, odd, but... it's not like the biggest all scene place, it, but it's the, probably the thing that's closest to that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's open on a Sunday. That is open on a Sunday. Um, takes the information. All right. Well, see you tonight, then. And she walks away. Oh, oh I. And Kate is probably confused for the next two and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> very, just very confused. Does not know what's going on. Who is this person? Who why did they talk to her? What like, is, did I just get like, it on? Should, you know? <laughs> like, what the fuck happened here? Right? <laughs> but she is, she is like, maybe I should go do anything tomorrow. Two days off? Yeah. I don't go anywhere ever. Maybe I'll just stop by and see if it's fun. It's gonna be boring if they even go like that's and it, it, it is still very early in the morning that you're probably there like sun mm -hmm. is if it's rising if it's ri not risen there it's just probably just on the cusp of rising mm -hmm. and you see you know as she walks back you know her and her friends you can see people that she's traveling with get back in that van and drive away, leaving you to be the only person at this early in the fucking park. Like, besides maybe like <laughs> one person way far, like walking a dog. Yeah. Probably. I don't know. What would she have? She probably have what? What sodas were like a thing back then? I guess probably like all the same ones, right? Yeah. Tab. Yeah, you know, Lakeisha's Tab, favorite is RC Tab. Cola, Pepsi, yeah. and Coke are yep. the big, like, colas. Yep. Yeah. She probably, she probably has a Coke. Yeah. And it's just like, that was the weirdest fucking interaction I've ever had. I'd probably I like say to find that normal human interaction is the weirdest shit that happened Weirdest to you. shit for her, yeah. Right? <laughs> hey, Lord Keeper, can I say that uh, probably about 15, 20 minutes after that interaction, Lakeisha probably, uh, you hear Lakeisha's uh, 1969 uh, SS Camaro uh, cherry red to match her arm uh, kind of rolling around, rolls around the corner and tracks her down. Uh, and there's... Hey, Cade! Hey, top of the morning to you. What's going on? Hey, Lakeisha, what's up? 
Morning. <laughs> oh, man. Are you kidding me? You could try a little harder than that. You look like shit. <laughs> Did you get any sleep? <laughs> no. You know that. I don't sleep. Uh, really? Yeah. Shuts off a car and hops out and uh, just comes over to the uh, driver's side and says, uh, Hey, listen, your, uh, your little friend there, are they um, keeping themselves to themselves? Are they behaving? First he asked you to ask me that? No. Why would I do anything that Percy says? Uh, that's a good point. Um, no, it's been the same. It's being weird and mysterious and helps when I ask. Okay. Are you afraid of the Lakeisha? Of all people, I wouldn't expect you to, but my mind has been changed about that kind of stuff lately. In answer to that, I think Lakeisha looks them straight in the eye and then crosses over into the passenger side and gets in. She tries and to lock sits. it, but does not make it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nope. We're... You did this. We're going in. So, uh... Yeah, so uh, Lakeisha just, in answer to that, gets in on the passenger side and says, I mean, does it look like I'm scared of you? No. There's just been a lot of interest lately. My friend, as you all call him. Well, let's just say I'd hate for you to call him your enemy. Are you maybe afraid that I could become your enemy? I have enough enemies in this world. I'd like to see that you never become one of them. I can tell you that's never been a goal. Anyone who fucks with you is... Oh, stupid. <laughs> uh, if only you could, could have been my mouthpiece for <laughs> more than a few interactions in my life. I'm sure you had him handled. I'll tell you one thing. And she reaches behind her and pulls out a tab from you don't know where because <laughs> you know that she's got weapons that have holsters, right? Yeah, she's probably like, what the? <laughs> where the fuck did she pull out a tab? But probably from behind her and just uh, pops it and says, listen, you know, I hate to say it, but Sometimes it's all about appearances, you know. Let's say Anybody... I don't know. I mean, anybody in this life that tells you that they have everything figured out, yeah, don't walk away from them, run. Because they're lying to you. Uh, keep that in mind. You know what else I'd love for you to keep in mind? Sometimes there's a, what they call it, a, a Maltese Falcon kind of feel to these things, I find. Everybody likes suffering in their own silo. All you gotta do is promise me, promise me that the minute that 
demon daddy in there. Like, what? I... Sorry, I thought you were... Aware of it. That's Is that kinda... what you all call him? I mean, not all of us, but, you know, the name has been bandied around. It, it's... That's neither here nor there. It's not important. What I'm saying is that just promise me if that guy up there in your head It's not my head. It, well, wherever he exists in space and time at this moment. Alright? Just make sure that you're not suffering in a silo all your own, you know? Because you don't have to. And if he can hear me, just know that we've got her back too. I've suffered in silos. I'm fine. What are you doing out here? Oh. Well, I thought you would have figured it out already. The other times I've checked in on you and you were out in the middle of nowhere. Duh, I've got you on my radar like at all times. And she pulls oh out like God. a gadget <laughs> that's got like a tracker. Because, I mean, she gifted you this vehicle. Oh, no, fully, yeah. <laughs> there is no universe in which yeah. she did not put a tracker on this vehicle. There is no privacy. Oh no. Put it this way. Hate me for it later, but... If I'm not keeping an eye on you, there's others in the agency that might be. Takes the last swig of a tab and uh, crunches the can in her metal arm, rolls down the window and just pitches it. <laughs> That's because littering. I mean, are you gonna have somebody come get me about it? I, you know. Anyway, I'll let you enjoy the rest of your morning. And gets back out, slams the door a little too hard, and uh, gets in a car and goes off, uh, actually, to, uh, to Tiff's house. All right. We're gonna take a it's gonna take a moment before we deal with that. Uh but yeah. Kate, you're left with I don't know which one of the two is for the strangest human interaction. Um uh, you decide, you tell me later on. Um uh, but yeah, uh sometime quite some time before uh Akisha arrived. Or is remotely, if Tiffany is even there at her parents' house. Uh, where is Tiff on this cold as fuck Sunday morning? You are currently muted, dear. Yeah, you're big time muted. Big time muted. Sorry, I must have double clicked it. Um, what time is it? Uh,. Good question. We talked earlier. It was right? like seven a.m. I I would need to know what time it is to know where yeah. she is. S s anywhere, some between uh, seven a.m. and noon, give or take, uh, depending on where you want to. Uh, what is your morning routine? Well, I mean, it's Sunday, and yeah, her parents are the quote unquote good Christians. Yeah. So they are gone going to church. They are up getting the kids ready. Tiffany has not been invited. Tiffany has been specifically told she is not yeah. allowed to go. Um, so she is waiting uh, for her parents to leave. Mm. Um, and she is probably going to wait until she can hear, like, they probably have her mom's BMW. That's probably what they took, which means they left her car where she can pull it out of the driveway. 
because they've been trying to block her in and try to keep her home as much as possible when she can. But, you know, she, she has her ways of getting out if she needs to. But she'll wait for them to leave, wait to hear them go down the street, and then she's going to, like, walk in the kitchen. She'll look at the phone for a second, and for, like, a minute, she stands there and thinks about Colin Percy's house again. She doesn't know what else to do. You know, she's already talked to Bia. She doesn't know what's going on she would probably think about maybe calling Cade but then know that the record shop doesn't open till noon and she might not be working today anyway because they might have the day off or what have you and I think she's just gonna grab her bag and she's gonna get in her car and she's driving to Percy's house now obviously Panda knows they're not there but she would probably just yeah. drive over um, she's going to put her car in the garage and then walk around to the back door because that's where she's been coming into the house and she's just going to knock. Yeah. What you're, you as a person know and what your character know are two different right. things, right? Uh, so she would, go, she would go to Percy's house and it would probably, t she would probably drive around for a while and, you know, try to talk herself out of it. She'd probably go drive past the Durbin's house and see that there were no cars in the driveway because they've all left for church. Um, yeah. You know, she'll think about going and clocking Casey, but what's the point at this point? Uh, but yeah, she'd probably drive okay. around, you know, drive past a couple of friends' houses, start seeing that no one is home. Everybody has gone to their various churches or Sunday breakfasts with family. Like, nobody's around, so she's just going to drive over to Percy's. She probably gets mm -hmm. there like 11.30 noon before she finally gets there. Yeah. And she's just going to, like park her car in the garage close it because she knows safety don't leave the car yeah. out she knows he would fuss especially because he's not there he may not be there she'll see his car still sitting there having not moved and she has no clue what's going on um she'll like close everything down and she'll go to the back door and knock all right and then knock again mm -hmm. and then knock again and then when there is no answer She's literally like, there's that big um, plywood thing that's sitting there that he uses as a back porch. Yeah. And there's like that one little folding chair on it. And she just plunks down in the folding chair and just hangs out in the cold. So in a very funny way, if we like pull down cameras like over the studio and just like put a little like character bubble of where everybody is right now. It is kind of funny <laughs> to see how as everybody's going places to possibly see people. Y'all miss, miss each other completely. Like, you, you, you see Lakeisha going to, like, Tiff's house and, like, probably, like, a street down, like, as, like, you're one that's pulling around the corner. You do see, like, Tiff going to Percy's house. And you see, in the, in, from the motel, you see, like, the car, like, going by and going to Mia's house. And you have Kate's van park in the park, probably still confused as hell why did she have human interaction this morning i think but. i think eventually tiffany's gonna go look and see if she can she knows he keeps a spare key around somewhere for yeah. emergencies she's gonna start digging around and see if she can figure out where he moved it to yeah so do i need to roll something for that or do i just find the key uh well considering that the last two person that were here physically are somewhat responsible aka you and Bia uh, I'm assuming that with that responsibility the, the key would have been put you know at the proper place yeah like I, I would have put it back where it was but I don't yeah. know that I would have checked that first because I know how suspicious he is of everything and I know he would have moved it so I'd probably spend a few minutes looking around before going and looking and then realizing he yeah. has not come home since. Yeah. Or maybe he came home and used his own keys, yeah. came in, saw the house was clean, and was like, no, fuck this. Because she, yeah, dude. when she was there, she completely polished the entire inside of the house because she needed to be a busybody. I do believe, Bia, you were at Percy's house this morning because he called his own place. So the only thing you would see as you came in the driveway, you did see like, car track from Bia's car uh, from like, probably like a few hours ago at most. Yeah, I would probably check. I would just check around and I would look like yeah. under the normal rocks, the mats, like he doesn't keep it in a real conspicuous place. So yeah, and I would look around and then if I didn't find it in a few minutes, I would go look at the last place that we took the key. There we go. So. And it's, it's 
move from there because Percy hasn't been home since. Yeah, so she would pull in, she'd close everything up, and she'd get the key. She probably has like a little overnight bag or something just so she's got an extra pair of clothes in case like she's going to go out or whatever. Um, and she would just walk in and be like, Hello? Bia? Dad? Percy? And she just it just getting quieter every time. And then she would just go in and she would throw the deadbolt and just like, I don't know if she would like pass out on the couch or whatever. Like she might, she might just flip the TV on, on whatever garbage afternoon Sunday morning TV is on. And like, it's just infomercials. Yeah. It's infomercials or like, you know, middle of the day, it's like the football game or whatever is on. And she's just going to put the game on or because it's probably getting ready to start the, the afternoon games and she's just going to curl up on the couch like in a little ball you know she might run in the bedroom and grab a pillow or two to toss on the couch and she's just going to curl up and throw a blanket over herself and just watch all right for so. flavor um i think i'd like to say that at one point uh if lakeisha did not see tiff leave her parents house that yeah, there's nobody home yeah there. there's a minimum of places that if would believably yeah. go and i think she would have uh probably spotted uh maybe at least spotted if pulling yeah. in and and i feel like there's a, a bit of an overwatch that lakeisha has for everyone really so she's definitely aware that percy has not been around either see yeah and now there's activity in the house and i think she put two and two together in her own way so she's like yeah. from like three blocks back behind the bushes around the corner you know what i mean just keeping a watchful eye. she's over at our new workshop double checking that everything's being installed okay yeah so okay. <laughs> I mean, we doesn't want to spy on the, spy on their friend, right? It's fine. Uh, but yeah. So, yeah. Tiffany is here. She's uh, like, Isha, like, after like, you're like, oh, she's there. Oh, she's probably there. All right, and like noticing a few things. Uh, and eventually, uh, I'm assuming that good old Piercy would probably mess everything over there. Uh, is waking up at Bia's house, smelling slightly less like shit. Taking a shower, eating muffins, you know. The, yeah. the, the whole hangover routine. Yeah. At least she doesn't serve you some raw eggs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Once he's feeling a little... Like, he's not going to feel good for a good day or two. Um, or the rest of his life. Yeah. But once he's feeling at least a little better, um, and he probably still has not said hardly anything to be outside, like simple pleasantries of thank you. Uh, he, I think he's finally going to look up and go. Two things. Um, one. I would like to respond to what you said in the car when I am. I need to work on myself a little bit. Yeah, okay. If you're okay yeah, with that. It, you're, you're good. Okay. Two, I, I don't think it's any help waiting. I should go talk to her now. Yeah. Um, uh, when you were in the shower, I just did it quick drive by she's not at her folks place she's it's sunday she's probably at, at church oh no why would she be at my place of course right uh you listen shit's been weird um you were looking at the bat um 
Can you tell anything about the thing? He's gonna immediately be like, oh, fuck, yeah, okay, distraction, uh, yeah. Um, can I make any potential rolls to inspect the bag? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I do believe this would very much fall in the category of weird. Okay. Oh, yeah. That is, uh, something I'm very average at. So, <laughs> we're gonna find out. That's not bad, actually. Uh, eight? Eight? No, it's actually... Mm -hmm. No, some would consider that average. Average, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not bad. It's not good. Uh -huh. Average. Almost perfectly average. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, no. Uh, because not a lot of information was very much shared. Let me just look at that right here. Um, all right. There's definitely something like y you've encountered some strange artifact in your days. Yeah. Some good, some not so good. Uh, this one does have a strange feel to it. But not in a bad way. Which is a bit reassuring, considering that somebody very close to you is in possession of that. Um, there's what somebody that believes in special will probably, you know, consider a magical sense to it. But you also a bit of science, in fact, so whether or not all you want to perceive that or do something you have yet to be able to explain. No, I leave that up to you. Uh, but you get a feeling that in the right hand, probably not yours. Uh, yeah, this could do well. Either some good or some, a lot of hurt. A lot, of, a lot of hurt. Uh, but you're not exactly sure of its nature of it. You may have to spend more time with it. But you're also, you know. Not totally yourself yet. Mm. Where'd you, uh, where'd you get this from? I'm gonna sound insane, Percy. <laughs> um, I doubt it. Yeah, okay, I had a dream All right. that, that, uh, Doug and Joan... Okay. told me uh, it was them like this was not my subconscious doing shit it was them okay. um, that something chose me right uh, to protect Fairwick I'm not real clear on it and then I felt that and then I woke up and that was at my dresser what pig do, do you know? Something big. It was the weight of the world. I... I'm gonna hold the bat out take your hand and wrap it around it with my hand on top of it. I say, that don't sound insane. Our lives are insane. So by comparison, that's about par. If it's the weight of the world, you got another pair of shoulders to help. Least I can do after you fucking help me today. So... That's what Doug said. Oh, Doug's pretty smart then. And you also notice that she's not wearing the necklace with the ring. <clears throat> Listen, uh, I, I got a lot to work out. 
Yep, and we're gonna get to. We're gonna get to yours. You're gonna go work that out. I just, I, I was. What? Well, hold, hold, if you could no, hold hear. on. Calm down for a sec. Do you guys hear that? Sorry. There's like a, a big banging outside my house. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I have stuff to work out, but running didn't help. So, I'm here to stay. And whatever this is, whatever you got going on, I would be insane to leave. Okay. Whatever it was that chose you chose goddamn right, so at least we can trust it for that. And she hefts this bat, and you've held it. You know that it's way it's, too it's heavy, heavy for a baseball yeah. bat. The thing is solid oak. Like, uh -huh. that's not what bats are made of for a very good reason. She's hefting it like a normal baseball bat. Uh. <clears throat> it feels it, I was wondering if you could tell anything about it because it feels like that thing like uh -huh. whatever it was so if you knew anything if you could tell anything about the bat then that might give us answers on whatever the hell it was um huh, and I can do a lot of stuff and I can learn a lot of things but you got to give me time for it that uh, I research yeah yeah yep. you is it do you, does it weigh anything to you? Cause that fucking shit was. I, I... It... It's a little heavy. Uh -huh. No, it's really heavy. That 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 thing's heavy. I feel like I'm swinging around a lead pipe. Oh, is that is it lighter to you, or are you just really? strong how am i supposed to know that could you lift me nope that that's in all right let's um let's go into tips let's well, i'm very first, tired you're going to i'm yours. not thinking let's, straight yeah let's, let's go. go let's go all right <laughs> Percy, like walks way too quickly out the door <laughs> oh my god all right uh, could, so but... eventually some people and this morning are still re reuniting. Um, I'm not sure if within all those things, uh, Kate had any plan to possibly check in on Percy because why she seen him, boy, was he like in a mess. Uh, I'm not sure if you've done, made this part of your uh, semi-regular routine or not. Uh, you tell me. I feel like she'd maybe like drive by the house sometimes to see where yeah. he was, but she also like doesn't try to like knock or anything because she doesn't yeah. know if he wants to see her. Yeah. Uh, because time is a soup. Uh, everybody roll me. Actually, Bia. And Cade, or yeah, Percy and Cade, whoever wants to roll. Uh, I need two people to roll me D6, but like one in the party A and one in party B. Because right. I need to know the timing on how things, you know, how people would. Got a four. First. I got a five. All right. So, um, Bia, you probably arrive uh, at Percy's house a bit before. Depending on the route that you take, uh, you may see a semi-familiar car park on the side of the road a few blocks away, uh, trying to be discreet, but when your car is that fucking red, it's mm. not that discreet. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, it is, no, just it is not on. the car to tell people. Um... <laughs> Bia but eventually, freak Percy out anymore. So just is like, 
Nope, we're going. <laughs> we're going. Fuck that. Uh, but eventually make it home. Uh, you, as you approach the house, uh, it would be a fair assumption that you are fairly perceptive. A person, just based on your extracurricular occupations, being not to die, um, that you would probably see like, uh, you know, fresh car track. Because I do believe Trish, uh, Trish. oh boy. <laughs> to be fair, the names are similar. Yeah. That's my name. Don't wear it out. Just not in game. Yeah. yeah. You're fine. Uh, Trish without a, without a R. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tiffany's Tiffany's there. She's not trying to hide yeah. the fact that she's there. And Bia had yeah. taken off and like double yeah. checked, and she knew I was. But do you there, park so. your car the car in, in, in a garage, right? Yeah, always because yeah. Percy would lose his shit if yeah. I left my expensive ass car in the driveway. He so, so yeah, out. you you would see like there the, the, the was a bit of move around like the garage door and car track. Uh, so you know there's a car that recently pulled up there and it's probably still in here. Uh, and there's only a, you know, a very close handful of people that, you know, usually do that or have access to it. Uh, uh, and eventually, Cade, in your van, you, you passed a, a very red car. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, everybody passes the car, you know, and Lakeisha doesn't stop them either. Matter of fact, if Kay uh, takes the time to look in the driver's seat, she's probably not even in there. <laughs> so what you choose to do if you, you know, with that information, it's up to you. Um, but yeah, you do. I mean, you've seen that car like moments ago, too, so... Yeah. yeah. She's like, oh my gosh, why is Lakeisha following me? <laughs> God. Again. I, I, you have to find that GPS to make it stop. I gotta find Lakeisha, this thing. Lakeisha, uh, Keisha, Keisha. Oh my God. But yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, for probably the first time in uh, a very uh, long week, you do see a, uh, cars being parked. Uh, well, well, new cars being parked. Uh, in Percy's driveway. Because Percy's car has been there for a week. Tiffany is asleep on the couch, just out. She hasn't yeah. been sleeping very well at all and just being curled up someplace that's at least a little bit familiar yeah. where she doesn't have the stress from home. Because she's Percy. not expecting anybody to come back. Yeah, Percy and Bia, however you want to enter that home. I think just pauses outside the door and goes you good not in the slightest but um this feels like something that i should do out of the corner <laughs> out of no seemingly nowhere you hear lakeisha's voice say quietly well you better be prepared to do something because she's been in there waiting for you for a while. <laughs> Hungover is... <laughs> come out and she's just picking her nails with a with a dagger. <laughs> like... Hungover as fuck and, and sleep deprived. Percy effortlessly and perfectly points his revolver at her and goes, fuck, don't do that, Keish. Um, God, ow. damn it. She hears him yell and jumps and wakes up and hits her head like on the wooden arm of the couch. And you just hear from inside, ah! Pretend you're not here. Fuck. Uh, Percy just like quickly goes in and shuts the door behind him. Uh. Oh, Bia is actually going to stay outside. Okay. Percy, I'm sorry. I, I needed to get out of the house for a little while. I just came over here. Did you just fucking apologize to me yeah i'm not supposed to be in your house i was only supposed to be here that one night yeah fucking apples don't fall that far uh no sit down shut up don't talk no that's rude sorry i'm sorry fuck can we talk um i guess okay 
can we talk a little further from the door? Because I'm pretty sure there are two people with their ears pressed against it right now. Yeah, to... meanwhile, outside, <laughs> Lakeisha and Bia are, and I'm just like nodding at Bia. Literally, Tiffany will just get up and walk. I need to stop moving. I keep kicking my camera. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. I, oh, fuck's sake, JP professional. Just, I'm sorry. Without, without <laughs> even like needing prompting, Tiffany will get up and immediately walk down into the basement into the lore library. Uh, and the oh, infirmary. You absolutely pass the training bag just like out <laughs> in the room because Bia did not put it away before. No, she left. and Tiffany would have expected Bia to be here a couple of times because I know, but I'm doesn't phase her at all. But she goes directly to the basement. Percy passes it and he's like, has somebody been fucking beating this with a bat? Oh. Uh, and then she just keeps going into the uh, the lower library. Um, he'll close the door behind him and just heave, like his shoulders go up and down. And he just keeps staring at the door and goes, if you want to yell, that's okay. Um, I understand. And I'm ready for that. I don't need to yell about anything. Look, I get it, okay? I get it. I get it. Figure <laughs> it out. Oh, no. Okay. Um, Percy, it's okay. Yeah, tell me what you figured out, Tiff. All of it. Everybody knew. Nobody told me. You had to keep the secret, and I don't know why. That's the only thing I don't know. But he doesn't want to be my dad. You didn't want to be my dad. Mom didn't want me to be anybody but his, and I'm not. I'm the kid nobody wanted, and it's okay, because I'm not a kid anymore. God damn it. You are my daughter. Yeah, I look just like you. How did I never figure that out? Because you're my daughter. You miss the most important things in front of you. Uh, he's going to slowly turn around and just sit down on the edge of one of the tables. And she'll just sit down in one of the chairs close by. I never, ever didn't want you. I am a fuck up of a of a dad, of a man, of a sheriff, and I knew that I was gonna be a problem. Yeah, that's not how Mama put it. <laughs> Tell me, how how did she put it? She said it was her choice. She said she thought you would never be around. But you've always been around and she just never noticed. I remember seeing you at everything. Like you came to all of my stuff when I was a kid. I saw you standing in the back. Why do you think my grades are as good as they are? Daddy ain't smart. Mama ain't smart. You're the genius. No, I'm not. Because you can have all the bit of knowledge. You can read every book in the world, but it still doesn't let you see what's in front of you. Wisdom and intellect are different stats. <laughs> yeah, tomatoes being a fruit, but not being a smoothie and all that bullshit. Listen. <sighs> Percy, listen, you, you don't owe me anything, okay? You don't, there's, there's no obligations. No, no, there ain't. There ain't a single fucking obligation. I owe nothing to you. You owe nothing to me. And I'm I'm here. God fucking I've always been here. I ain't been obligated to shit. They promised to take care of you, and look what they did. Your mom. Gotta be the most flexible person in the world because I ain't ever seen anybody who could have their head up their ass, their foot in their mouth, and their nose in somebody else's business at the goddamn same time. But fuck, she does it. Yeah, she kind of does. (laughs) 
Tiff, I am a bad dad. I'm a shell of a man. And I'm a really, really bad guardian. She like I... scoots the chair over and just wraps her arms around her waist and just hugs. He stops talking and just slowly wraps his arms around her. Just holds her head to his chest. I there and you actually care about me and not the appearances yeah I do they don't no they don't but I wanted them to I thought that they would better than I would and that's why I didn't tell you I wish you would have because they've been so unfair. I wish I would have too. I don't know that there's a way to fix it. Mama keeps asking how she can fix it, and all I can do is tell her to give me the 18 years back. I would have been a better dad than him. No, I wouldn't have, but I'm willing to. What? I would have been a terrible dad. I would have been terrible. I spent my whole life chasing shadows. And yeah, I ended up being right, sure. But imagine a life for a fucking kid like that. But... You know what changed my life? I'm gonna slowly kind of peel her off of me so I can lean down and look at her. She sits up a little bit. One day. One single day I was watching you. I shouldn't have been. I shouldn't have been anywhere near you. And I saw it. You raised your hands and there was just this tiny spark. Nobody else would have fucking noticed. But to me, that was everything. That meant that it didn't matter if I stayed away from you. The life that I was leading was going to follow you. I could see that intelligence in your eyes. I could see you raising your hands. And there was a joy for the world. And I realized that you were going to follow the same fucking path that I was. Because you were going to see all the same threads that I do. And I couldn't stop it. If I would have been a very bad dad, and I'm sorry for being such a terrible man, but I want to do better. I can't give you the 18 years back, but I can give you 18 more. Mama? I promise to do everything that I can. And she just hugs him again, just starts crying into his chest. He'll hold her even closer and go, Oh, and I'm sorry for leaving for a week. That was stupid. That was dumb. That was no, stupid. That was selfish. Fine. No, it's not. Don't no. Don't do that. Don't say that. It was. It was wrong. Yes, it was wrong, but it's okay now. Y'all are working through some shit. <laughs> it's okay now. Do you tell you? And she sits back and looks up at you for a second. Did you tell you? She didn't tell me nothing I didn't know and just didn't want to admit. She lights her hands up. Mama knows. <laughs> oh, she didn't tell me mom. that. She didn't tell me none of that. No, I didn't. No, that's, um... Oh, that's a problem. Uh, I'm not at church this morning and I'm not allowed to go with them no more. Yeah, no, they probably think you're, you're like the devil's child or something. Fuck. No, no, it's not like that, but Mama appearances is all that matters to her most days and she's so she's upset she showed up here that night that you dropped me off here my place yeah she was out looking for me she showed up here we mm -hmm. headed out we had a big old argument about how much she's been lying and everything going on and i told her i got shot i made her watch me heal myself 
What does she say? She's very freaked out. No, she's not talking to me and neither is daddy. Well, not daddy. What do I call you now? <laughs> I don't give a shit. Call me Percy. It ain't gonna change the fact that I'll be your dad. I like dad better. <laughs> I'm a little uncomfortable with it, but I think I could get used to it. We'll figure it out together, baby. Don't don't call me daddy because Lakeisha keeps calling the fucking thing in K Demon Daddy, and I feel like it's gonna like the wire's gonna get crossed. That might be hard because it's habit, but I'll try. Yeah, we'll we'll do our best. <laughs> but like, I don't know. It's just it's weird. Is this why Papa let you come to everything? Is this why he's so nice to you? He I know he knows. We can tell he don't know. He liked me because we we got along, and then he always thought that I was better for your mom. You probably would have been better for Mama. <laughs> Tiff, you probably don't want to hear this, but your mom is an all right woman. She's stupid. She's selfish. But deep down, she does care. That is why I was with her. I know. It's just that... I laughed at her real bad the other night. She said my safety was the most important thing. <laughs> she lied to me. She bleached my hair as a three-year-old. She forced me into doing all sorts of stuff to make her and daddy happy and be the perfect kid. Here I am waiting for entrance letter letters to all the Ivies. I applied to all of them, you know. And she was lying to you. Hey, don't worry about her. I'll talk to her. This all be right. Yeah, I just... I don't know. I don't know what where it feels like home right now. Everything's just weird. You know, weirdly enough, I've been where you're at. Granted, I went crazy and got kicked out of the police force, but basically the same thing. Things felt weird. And they stayed weird. But then I found Keisha, and you, and Kate, and Bia. I think started to feel a little bit better. So just give it some time and you're more than welcome to stay here. I mean that. Your mother's gonna give up a fucking problem, but I will take care of it. Yes, of course you can stay here. I might bounce back and forth for a while while we figure stuff out. It's not like you have an extra bedroom. Hell. We got down here, don't we? We can set her up. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that. I don't want to scare the kids no more. I promise I don't you. I extra pressure anymore. I just want to be able to live. Tiff, you might not want to hear it, but you're a kid. I'll make sure that you can be one. She doesn't argue it. She kind of gives you a look, <laughs> but she doesn't argue it. It's going to be all right. I will talk to your mother. We will figure things out. And I am not going to leave again. Promise. Promise. I'm holding you to it. I just have a lot of apologies to make. Yeah, I think we all do. Well, don't feel like apologizing to your mother. She might be if somebody cares down inside, but it doesn't mean she does a fucking good thing with it. Sorry. Just... I cannot believe you were applying to Ivy League schools and she was not giving you the credit for that. What the fuck was she doing? Huh? Sorry. No, I know. You're dealing with it. I'm... It doesn't count unless I get a normal. Because I'm not perfect yet. It does... No. Fuck it. I ain't never once been accepted into a single goddamn school. I was a football player, all right? And I've solved most of the mysteries that the entire precinct... No, I'm doing it again. We're going to calm down. It's okay. Intelligence ain't got jack shit to do with tests, all right? You are smart because you're you. And we should no. let you do that. Smart because I'm you. Don't give me credit for that. Fucking. You just gotta like very lightly tap her upside the head. 
There's a lot of people standing around outside. We should. There are. Yes, we should go. They there. fucking showed up to my house like they were somehow invited. To be fair, uh, I wasn't invited. You're always invited. And I guess now so is everybody, so let's go let them in. Uh. <laughs> she'll let him go upstairs and she'll take a minute to like collect herself because yeah. she's crying. And Percy like, will, like, pu puffy, red eyed, still, yeah. like, he's washed up now, but he's still fucking tired. So he's got bags. Open the door. All right, get in here. Fucking. The yeah, and Lakeisha acting as if they didn't just step away from the door when they heard him approaching. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, oh. At this point, Cade's already pulled up and like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> yeah, I think actually Sense there's a... <laughs> right. I think there's a bit of conversation that Lakeisha would um, initiate with Thea, actually, while all of that has been going on. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, it starts with the nod, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, processing the situation. And then Lakeisha says, you know, B, uh, you, uh, you've got a singular fortitude, I'll tell you that. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, it's no secret the way you two feel about each other. A compounded with all the weird shit that goes on in this town. You have idea. And she's got the bat with her. She's got it like tucked under her duster kind of, but mm. it's at her hip. Hmm. And the, uh, you know, Lakeisha probably clocks that and says, hey, whoa. It's a Pretty solid piece of hardwood you got there. Yeah, um... And she's gonna pull it out and just, like, pass it to her and just go, Can you tell anything about what the fuck is up with this thing? Well? Like the, I don't know, the vibe? I mean, for starters, uh... Yeah, Louisville Slugger, this is not. This is a few pounds too heavy, I'm pretty sure of it. Where'd you get this? It showed up in my room. Um, it's... Yeah, uh, something shows me. I don't know what the fuck is going on. What do you mean, chose you? Very specific kind of phrase, so I noted. Was a very specific dream, Lakeisha. Um, the physical weight of the entire universe coming down on your head is a very specific feeling especially when it's bookended by the actual souls of your dead husband and sister uh, telling you that something shows you. And then waking up and finding that thing by my dresser. And it feels and like that. And as you're having this conversation and eventually Percy opens the door uh and things seems like you're able to possibly settle in and have a discussion and your uh, other companion in your usual uh, circle pulls in and all of that. The power, like, because I'm assuming the game was still on TV and all that, like, mm -hmm. you passed out and it was probably still on. All the electricity in the house gets cut off. And you do notice if you're looking out the window that the entire street light that are still on or even like a house further down there is suddenly no power. 
it's not wetter. Does that happen to, to does that happen to any of the devices that Keisha has on her as well? Like everything, just anything that's everything elect that use electricity gets shut down. And that hey. is what we're gonna figure out next time. Oh, fuck. oh man. Oh, no. Yeah. Now you have the power of cliffhangers. Uh, Shit. Uh, uh, hey, Bia, get that bat ready, please. That's right? So the power of cliffhangers now. Yeah. Dude. Mm -hmm. It's become too powerful. <laughs> Oh yeah, Lakeisha hands it back oh, to you, kind of like, powerful. yeah. I, I, I let you, I, I let you get, go on get like in the a, suit. <laughs> I let you go on a like two or three hours emotional ride. Yeah. And now we gotta fight oh, a now monster. Need to go now you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, you know, it's gonna be a shit show happening in the middle of your crisis. It has to be. Got it. <laughs> best place you for it. You know, the best way to deal with emotion is to just defer your attention to something else. Yeah. yeah. Compartmentalization. <laughs> uh, you know. Ding.